Hello and welcome back. This is Jennifer McGuire. Today I'm doing another video where I take one stamp set and show you five creative ways of using it. These are five techniques that can be used with different stamp sets, just looking at ways to stretch our products. This video is actually part of a video hop with a bunch of different companies from the Stamping Village. And be sure to look below, I'll have links to the other YouTube channels. The Stamping Village is a group of stamp companies that have come together to help each other grow. And the best part about the Stamping Village is it keeps growing. More and more companies are getting involved. Now part of the Stamping Village is that they've come out with two stamp sets that have a mix of designs from each of the companies. And the best part is the profits from these stamp sets are donated to the Dreaming Zebra, which is an organization that helps bring art to children. Now, as I mentioned, there are two sets. This is the newer one. This is the Stamping Village Holiday Seals. These are seals that are perfect for envelopes, but as I'm going to show you today, they're perfect for cards too. And there is one seal from each company included. Each seal has a very different style, so you can mix and match it with products you already have. Now, as I mentioned, there was another seal set that came out before this one, and that is a more general theme, so it's not holiday theme. But keep in mind, you could use either of these stamp sets with today's techniques. And I'll link to another video that I did with these seals up here on the top right and in my description below. Okay, so let's jump into five different ways to use these images. The first is to create stickers that you can put on your holiday card envelopes. This is easy to do and you can do it with other stamps too. Here I have a label sheet. So it's a full eight and a half by 11 sheet that has permanent adhesive on the other side. I'll link to the particular ones that I use. Now you could stamp in any way that you want to on here and I did a few different things. In this case, I'm stamping a bunch of them at once with Versamark ink and then I'm using gold embossing powder. This is quick and gives a nice elegant seal that you can add to your envelope. But I also did some options where I stamped with black ink and colored with markers. I found I was even able to use Copic markers. I just heat set them every once in a while to make sure that the ink didn't bleed. You can even stamp these with colored inks, use specialty embossing powders, anything you want. Now, even though this is a thin label sheet, I found I was able to get good stamping results on it too. Another option is to use white cardstock and put a double-sided adhesive on the backside before you die cut it. So basically you're creating your own sticker. Here's another thing that you can do. In this case, I white heat embossed the seals onto the label sheet, and then I just applied ink to them using a blending brush. You could use any ink for this. And this is great because you can make your seal perfectly match whatever you used on your card. Now to cut out my seals, I'm using a circle die from the Hero Arts Circle Infinity die set. The die is about one and three quarter inches wide and it cuts these seals out perfectly. You could use a punch or any circle die for this. I also like to use the Lawn Fawn stitched circle dies. There's one that's about two inches wide and it gives that faux stitched edge on the outside of the seal also. So both options are fun. You'll see me use both throughout the video. So I'll use the dies to cut out my seals and then I'll have a bunch of stickers ready to go. Another option is I know you can get sticker sheets that have two inch circles on them. You could do that and just stamp the circles right on to those stickers so that everything's ready to go. There are lots of, lots of options to create these seals to add to your cards. So here are a few different ones that I created. Some were inked, some were colored, some were heat embossed. But now they're ready to add to my holiday cards. I wanted to show you what it looks like to have one of these seals on an envelope. This card I'll show you later in this video, but look how this gives a nice finishing touch to your envelope. Okay, my second idea for using a circular stamped element like this is to create a background with repeated images. This is easy to do and in fact I made several examples. So I'm placing a piece of cardstock into my MISTI stamping tool. There's some temporary adhesive on the back to hold it in place. Now I'm taking a bunch of the seals from the stamp set and lining them up. You can do it diagonal, you can do it straight across, whatever you want. I ended up with the pattern that you see here. And you can see how I covered that entire cardstock piece. I then transferred all of the stamps onto the door of my MISTI. And for this first example, I'm stamping all of the seals with Simon Says Stamp Fog Ink. This is a super light gray ink and I thought it would be nice for a subtle background. 
And before I took all of those stamps out, I did create a bunch of backgrounds and I'll show you those in a few minutes. Next, I took a few focal point seals and I stamped them on craft cardstock and white cardstock and added coloring. I then cut them out using the one and three quarter inch circle die, but you could use a circle punch if you wanted to. I gave those circles a finished edge by gluing them onto a two inch circle that has faux stitching. I then have my backgrounds that I created that I've added onto note cards. I also wanted to have little circles of red glitter paper for the nose on the reindeer and also for the berries for the card on the right. Now I know that is mistletoe and they don't have red berries, but I thought it'd be fun to do so anyways for some pop of red. So you see that snowflake on the left? That's from Altenew. And it creates these little dots that normally you throw away. But I actually kept those and I'm using those as accents on these cards. You could also use little gemstones or any kind of liquid glitter, but I really feel like this gives more sparkle. I also used a white Signo pen to create little snowflakes falling on this craft circle that I created with the reindeer. Little white details like that with a white gel pen are great on the craft. Okay, next I put some glossy accents onto the red glitter paper berries just for dimension and to make them shine even more. So here's a finished look at the cards. Now the background on this was created with all of those seals that we stamped at once. And I stamped that with Versamark ink onto craft cardstock, which gives that tone on tone look. Here's a closer look at the seal that we created by coloring with colored pencils and the red glitter nose that I created by die cutting a tiny little dot from red glitter cardstock. Here's the one that we created by stamping with the Simon Says Stamp Fog ink onto white cardstock. Then we have that one seal that's popped up as a focal point there in the center. And we have our red glitter berries. Another option for this design would be to keep it a one layer card and just color in one of the seals. But I like having a bit of dimension behind that focal point just to make it stand out more. This one was very quick to create. I gold heat embossed all of the seals onto red cardstock. And then I put a simple Merry Christmas sentiment strip sentiment at the center. So think about it, any image that you have, you can stamp repeatedly to cover a background, or you can take a bunch of different images, put them together into a stamping tool, and stamp them all at once to create your background. By the way, the Merry Christmas came from this Lawn Fawn Offset Sayings stamp set. This is fun because there's the solid images and the outline that you can layer together or use separately. I have one more example using the seals for the background. In this case, I white heat embossed onto a pool cardstock, but wanted to add something fun behind our seal. I'm using the Hero Arts Paper Layering Poinsettia die set. I've used this in a video before and I'll link to it here. But I created a poinsettia flower using those dies, and then I put the seal at the center. In the other examples, I just kept the seal simple, but you could always layer a flower like this or maybe a snowflakes behind it if you wanted. I also put some Studio Katia gold glitter gems at the center of that flower. So although all of those card examples have the same background, the same images, they all have a very different look. Okay, let's move on to our third technique for today. And this is to create an area of faux watercolor on your cards. This is super quick and a great way to create a focal point for your stamped image. I'm using Karen brush markers today. I've been using these a lot lately off screen and they're really fun to use and I love the bright colors. I'll link to them below. But you could use any water based marker here. You could even use distress inks. You can use Tombow markers. Just try what you have. I have a circle acrylic block here from Gina K Designs. I'm applying a rainbow of color around the circle block. You could also use a square acrylic block, a rectangle, whatever you have. And I'll link to a video where I did a bunch of examples with this technique. So after I've gone around and put this color onto my block, I'm going to spray it quite generously with water. You want to create droplets of color when you spray it with water. So you can see me do it here. Now I have a piece of watercolor paper. I like to use Tim Holtz watercolor paper because it's bright white. And I'm going to flip this over, set it down, smoosh it a little bit until you see all the color move and then walk away. This is the hardest part. I walk away for a few minutes and let it sit there. That allows some of the color to absorb and then I come back, lift it off, I can dab off the excess and look at that beautiful rainbow circle. 
Now you could do this with any colors that you want, blues and greens, blues and purples. I thought a rainbow would be fun for a unique holiday card. After I was sure that was completely dry, I used my anti-static powder tool, and then I stamped one of the seals with Versamark ink and added HeroArt's white embossing powder. I'll then heat set that, and I love that bright white image against all of the color. I trimmed that down and added it to a Gina K silver metallic note card. So I made that from the silver metallic cardstock, and it's four and a quarter by five and a half. I then added shimmer pen to the little lights on our image here, and then a dot of glossy accents. A little shimmer and shine makes a big difference on a simple card like this one. So you can do this technique of using an acrylic block and any kind of water-based markers or inks to create blocks of color like you see here. And again, check out that video that I did. I have lots of examples and I'm hoping that you'll give it a try. Okay, my next example is to create what looks like an engraved metal accent. This is something that I'm going to share more about on a future video, but I wanted to give you a peek of the technique here. Now in this case, I'm starting with some brushed silver cardstock. I've had this in my stash for a while, but I'll link to a similar one below. Any kind of shiny metallic cardstock would work here, mirror cardstock, whatever you have. I stamped with Versamark ink, and now I'm adding clear embossing powder. And what's cool is when you heat set this, it almost looks like that image is engraved in the paper. It's cool, I don't know how to explain it, but it gives this shiny look wherever you heat emboss and it creates a really cool engraved look. Okay, so I cut that out with the circle die as I've done on the other examples, and now it's time to create our note card. I used the Waffle Flower Ticket Frame Die Set, that's what you see over there on the left. I die cut the large die three times from this beautiful Serenity cardstock from Basil. It's such a gorgeous color. I glued them all on top of each other, and then I added them to a note card. And watch, I'm lining up the top of my die cuts with the folded line. So I will just trim off the excess and what I end up with is a shaped card. And the outside edge is stacked with dimension so it makes it stand out even more. I think it's fun to create shaped cards now and then because it's unexpected and unique. Now in the center of this, I have a large circle that I die cut from platinum vellum. It was a scrap and I just thought it'd be a nice soft shine. I also used the Hero Arts Snowflake Cluster Die and I created the two pieces you see here. These have three die cuts stacked together, so there's lots of dimension. And I cut them in half to stretch them across the card better. I have my seal in the center there that I created on the metallic cardstock. Once I have everything laid in place here, so these are not glued down, I'm just positioning everything, I'll take a piece of Glad Press and Seal and lay it across. When you press this down, it sticks and it'll pick up all of these pieces at once. You could also use masking tape or masking paper for this. Now I can flip that over and put adhesive on the back of all of the pieces at one time. I put foam tape behind the center and then liquid adhesive behind all of those stacked die cuts. Once it's covered with adhesive, I can pick it all up and put it back onto our card, making sure the position is right before I press it down. I then compress all of that press and seal down once again, and that will hold it in place while it dries. Once it's dry, I can peel off that press and seal and reuse it on another project. Again, if you don't have press and seal, you can use masking tape. To finish it off, I added a few silver gems and some iridescent gems. You can see how the fun the shaped card is. And a closer look at that circle element, it's kind of hard to see in the video, but it has this engraved look to it. So it looks like a metal engraved accent. This technique of clear heat embossing on metallic cardstock is great for backgrounds too. And again, I'll show you a video with more of this in the future. So this is another way to kind of stretch your stamps and create something special for your card. Okay, another technique that works great with simple circular elements such as these is a spinner card. I'll link to a video where I show lots of ideas for creating a spinner card, but I'll also show you how to create one here. I die cut some white cardstock from the Lawn Fawn Portrait Snowfall die, and that creates the background that you see here with the tiny little holes. I then have a circle die that I'm cutting to create a window. And the circle die is slightly bigger than the seals that I created that you can see there at the top of the screen. 
I also have a light pool colored cardstock note card. This is Hero Arts Arctic cardstock and it's four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm laying my white piece on top and tracing the circle opening onto the note card. And I'll line up that same die with that pencil circle. And I'll run this through my die cut machine also. This will create a window in the front of our note card. Off screen, I created two circle seals that I stamped, colored, and die cut. And these will be the spinner element. I need to put a piece of thread right down the center of one of these. So to make sure I get it right down the center, I have a piece of double-sided tape that I'm putting on the back of one of the circles, making sure it's centered straight. I then can flip it over and trim off the excess. Now if I put my thread right along this piece of tape, I know that it is centered. So I'll remove that release paper and you can see I also have some tape already on the back of this. I'm taking a piece of thread and lining it up right along that strip that I put down the center. Then we can take our other seal and put it on this side and that sandwiches the thread between them. I normally use clear thread for this, but in this video I'm using white thread so you can actually see it. Now I'm taking the front panel of our card, that white one, and on the back side of it I'm going to stretch our little spinner element. So I'm holding the spinner element right at the center of that window and putting a piece of temporary tape to stretch the thread up to the top and down to the bottom. By putting the tape there, it'll hold it in place as we add more adhesive and we can make sure we don't get any slack in our thread. Now I'm coming in with some strong double-sided tape and putting a piece right at the top and the bottom of that window opening to hold the thread in place. Then we can remove our tape. Now this is a little thing that I like to do to make sure my thread doesn't come undone. I remove the release paper and fold the thread back over it and trim off the excess. By folding it back over, I can be sure that it doesn't slip out when we put our card together. I don't know that you really need to do this, but I like to be sure. Now we'll put liquid adhesive on the back of this entire panel and add it onto our note card. So you can create a spinner card by having a circle die cut like this, and you can stamp anything on it that you want. It just happens that these circle seals fit perfectly on it. I also wanted to create a finished looking frame there. So I'm using one of the large faux stitch circle dies that I showed you earlier and a regular circle die. Two that fit into each other nicely, running them through my die cut machine together from white cardstock. And I create that circle frame with the faux stitching. And I just glued that around our window just for a finished look. So what you do is you kind of spin the pieces so that when you open them up, they'll spin like crazy. So watch, I'm going to just kind of rotate this around a bunch of times with my finger. And then when I put it into my envelope, it'll be nice and tight so that when the person opens it, it'll spin like crazy. Now I will say, I wish I would have made this card so it opened up to the side instead of upwards. When you have a card like this and you open it upward, when the cards open, those little images that are spinning are upside down. So if you were to make this, I recommend making it so it opens to the side because then when it spins and you open up the card, the images won't be upside down. So that's just something to keep in mind. I usually do it that way, but I forgot to this time. So I just wanted to mention that. But it's fun to be able to have two different elements on the two sides so they get a little surprise when they open it. Okay, there you have five fun ways to use this Holiday Seals stamp set from the Stamping Village. However, you can use these techniques with any small stamp images. You just need to die cut them into a circle shape. If you're interested in the supplies I use, they are linked below, along with the other stops on this video hop, so be sure to check them out. In the middle are a couple other videos that I mentioned throughout this video. Thanks for spending your time with me today. I really appreciate it, and we'll see you again very soon.